All right, here's a warm-up. Below is the derivative function. We want to know the intervals for which the regular function is increasing. And here's a hint. Remember this. Then we have g of x and h of x, and they want to know what ga, uh, ga is, g, o, g of f, h of x. Uh, that, this is funny to you if you, if you uh, know the different notations of this one right here. And then lastly, find the derivative. That being said, do this warm up, pause this video, and I'll do the problems in just a moment. Starting with the first one, we know that whenever the derivative is positive, f of x is increasing. So we would only need these regions when the function is above the x-axis. So the, uh, the intervals will be from negative 4 to negative 1. Remember, not including, because when the derivative is 0, you cannot make a claim that's increasing. And from 2 to infinity, not including 2 or infinity. That being said, let's move on to the second one. Over here, we want to know what a g of h of x is, which means we're going to take our h function and plug it into uh, the g of x function. So that will give you 2 times, and then x minus 2, otherwise known as uh, 2x minus 4. And then the last one, find the derivative. So let me go ahead and get that set up, because we have to rewrite this bad boy. So to find the derivative of and let me make this a little bit smaller writing tool. To find the derivative of this one, it's kind of easy. 5 times 4 is 20, so it's 20x to the 4 power. Remember to subtract 1. 5x is just 5, because 5 times 1 is 5. And then for the next one, minus, and then 2 times 1 fourth, which is 1 half, and then 1 minus, I mean 1 fourth minus 1, is negative 3 over 4. Now, typically, we don't like to leave it that way, so the last term can be rewritten as 1 over 2 times. When the 4 is in the denominator, that's a fourth root. When the 3 is on the numerator, that's uh, x to the 3 power. And the reason why I brought this stuff to the bottom is because of this negative right here. So, 20x to the 4th plus 5 minus 1 over 2 times 4th root of x cubed. Alrighty. Over here, we want to introduce the uh, sine and cosine. We know that sine would be, and I want to use this right highlighting tool, would be this one right here. This is your sine function. It starts at 0 and ends at 0 for, for a complete cycle. And when it's just x, it means the whole cycle is worth 2 pi. For cosine, we start at 1 and we end up at 1. Now, this is, these are oscillating functions, meaning go back and forth. When you start at one point, a whole cycle later, you end at a point. As you can see, for the sine, we start at 0, and we end, at, we end at 0. For the uh, cosine, we started at 1, and we end at 1. Which makes it a little bit curious. We have a sine function here, which is in red. But when you look at the derivative of the sine function, which is drawn right here, what does that look like? What does that look like? This is about 2 pi, by the way. That's a cosine. So the sine function, its derivative equals the cosine function. So that's something we're going to need to know in order to do these uh, derivatives. Now, when it comes to going the other way, if you start with the cosine function, so over here we have a cosine function, if you were to take a derivative of a cosine function, you actually end up getting a negative sine. So if you were to sketch it, you would try to sketch a sine graph, but because it's negative, you would want to sketch it the other way around. So you would, instead of going up and then down, you go down and then up. So it's pretty much just flipping it over the x-axis. So let's remember, the green one represents negative sine. What happens if you take the, uh, when you take the derivative of negative sine? You end up with negative cosine, because sine, the derivative of sine is cosine. So the negative sine, its derivative, will be negative cosine. I'm going to try to do a good job uh, graphing this, but it would start at 1, and then it would go down here. This is very, this is so difficult given that, uh, that uh, so many things to look at. Ah! I've never done anything more difficult in my life. 
All right, so that will be the, 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 the derivative of a negative sine graph, which would be negative cosine. He is uh, uh, showing that I did it the right way, so it's exactly the same thing. And what do we conclude? We conclude that the derivative of a sine is cosine, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, the derivative of negative sine is negative cosine, and the derivative of negative cosine Remember, third of cosine is negative sine, so that's negative, negative sine, or otherwise known as regular sine. So the fourth derivative of a sine will, will uh, be itself. That being said, that's number one. All right, now uh, here, comes, here comes the thing. We talk about comp composite functions because that's going to be very important when we talk about chain rule. And that's because we know what to do with the derivative of a sine. But what do you do with the derivative of a sine to the x to the fifth power? Well, we look at that separately. So inside the function, we just call it x to the fifth. So if you have a, if you have a function of sine of x, which we now know how to do the derivative of, and then we worry about this, this guy later. Same thing. This is going to be very important when we talk about chain rule. We have cosine to the fourth x. So we don't know how to deal with that derivative, but if we treat it as x to the fourth and then cosine of x, then we can go ahead and figure out what to do with them separately. And we will be able to once we do chain rule. So to conclude this video, we have these function. Uh, let's see if we can identify the insides and outsides. The outside function here will be x to the second power. If you uh, think of the inside, or what I highlight as red, red is simply an x. And then the, in, then the inside function, or g of x, would be negative 3x plus 1. I hope I said it correctly. I talk really fast sometimes. Outside is x squared. Inside is negative 3x plus 1. Over here, we have, uh, whoa, whoa. Is that a triple? Looks like a triple to me. So, oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, this is actually part of 5x to the fourth. Never mind. It's, it's just a double. So the outside function would be sine of x, and the inside function would be 5x to the fourth. And then lastly, over here, the inside function seems to be, or uh, g of x seems to be cosine, and the outside function seems to be x cubed. All right, that being said, we're going to stop the video right here and move on. I just realized I said stop the video right here, and then I also said move on. No, we're just going to stop the video.